Hi Creek Spielers, this is Amparo Lafondios. Welcome to the After Action Review for the Battle of Suffolk. Historically, there was a battle at Suffolk in the American Civil War. In 1862, after the Confederates abandoned the naval base at Norfolk, which you see circled in the small map in purple, United States forces occupied it. They also fortified Suffolk, which you see circled in brown. U.S. forces under the command of Peck linked a series of forts and artillery batteries which are outlined in the large map in yellow. Confederate Commander Longstreet probed to find a weakness. He sent scouts looking for a possible flanking route to the south, but quickly realized any action on that front would be futile. The action shifted north, and the battle turned into a siege. Eventually, the Confederates abandoned the siege. Though the U.S. forces were kept bottled up, they did not lose Suffolk. The Native and British Alliance, which is shown in red lines, consisted of eight players who commanded 32 infantry regiments, 18 cavalry squadrons, and eight artillery batteries. The Nordheim forces, defending Suffolk, are shown in yellow and were made up of seven players commanding 31 infantry regiments, eight cavalry squadrons, and nine artillery batteries. The Alliance had a much larger force, but the Nordheim have the positional advantage of the rivers and the forts shown in the yellow circle. The Nordheim commander, played by Great Gold, chooses a plan that is close to the historical, defending using the forts and rivers. Alliance commander Donahawaga, played by Lake Serena, plans a flanking attack to the south of Suffolk. Things kick off according to plan. Alliance columns enter the area, and Commander Mann, played by Ranger 9000, who's shown here near the Red Star on the map, comes into contact with the enemy. Nordheim cavalry under Kraft, played by James, near the Yellow Star, has pushed out to determine the enemy front line. They clash. By 0815, the Alliance columns are pushing forward. British Commander Morgan, played by Octavius Victor at the Red Star, is in a traffic jam trying to use a single road. Nordheim Commander Haygood, played by Designer of War, arrives from the south. At 0930, the Alliance Commander Griffiths, played by Turtle Flaps, gets an observation balloon in the air, giving the parent command a full view of the field. The traffic jam continues. Nordheim Commander Steyer, played by Scottish Civil War Savage, digs in on the southern hill and makes first contact. In the north at 1015, Nordheim Command sends the cavalry and an infantry division in a flanking movement. In the south, Alliance Commander Wilkins, played by Michael, and Wachmeister, played by Wilgo, find routes that give them access to the enemy flank. The battle at the fort on the hill heats up. Nordheim Commander Sandoval, played by Desert Fox, and Blunt, played by Latvitus, command the special artillery train and get orders deploying them west. The Nordheim northern attack continues at 1045. Doomson, played by Doom Gaming at the Yellow Star, uses marksmen to drive the enemy from the woods. Cox attacks in the center, and Wolf, played by Anna Kazan, destroys the tracks, denying the artillery train forward movement at the Red Star. Jajensen's at the Purple Star, played by Schwabauer, continues to frontally attack the fort on the hill and takes heavy losses. At 11.15, Cox presses home the attack in the north, and Alliance Officer Mann at the Red Star sends a key message to his CIC, Donahawaga, saying he needs reinforcement. The Alliance has 21 battalions and squadrons attacking in the south. Nordheim is defending with 12. Donahawaga gets the message from Mann at 11.45 and decides to pull six cavalry squadrons out of the southern attack and send them north. The remaining Alliance forces in the south continue to move into position and do not press their numerical advantage. The Alliance forces in the north collapse and begin leaving the field. Nordheim commanders Cox, Doom, and Kraft tighten the noose there. Donahawaga provides a screen for the withdrawal. The two Allied divisions under Wilkins and Wachmeister do engage in the south, but it is too late. The Alliance departs the field, and Suffolk remains in Nordheim hands. This was a Nordheim victory. Let's look at the headline moves for the game. The strongest move was Cox ordering the attack and creating the crisis for the Alliance in the North. This collapsed the entire Alliance effort. Moves that provided the best lessons learned were the Alliance's inability to concentrate through challenges in traffic management, switching priorities, and its slowly developing attacks. An additional point to consider was the good use of leader reconnaissance by both sides. 
Cavalry Commander Kraft did a good job finding the enemy center of mass in the opening moves, creating the possibility for the flank attack by Nordheim. Wilkins finding multiple eastern routes for the Alliance forces in the south allowed them to find the Nordheim's flank, and that was a good example of useful scouting. Another lesson learned was the continued Alliance frontal attacks on the hill in the south sapped that force of badly needed strength at a key point in the battle. Thank you for watching this after action review of the Battle of Suffolk. I hope you enjoyed this examination of all of the tactical problems that occur in a scenario and found it useful. Come join us playing Kriegspiel. It's an enjoyable experience and you learn quite a bit. We welcome all comers. We'll see you out there on the Kriegspiel board.